happy morning to you today it's a little bleary overcast it's going to be nice not too dang cold again with the weather well anyway hope it's okay east of here because i'm going to head a couple hundred miles out check out shreveport louisiana yes as i said before it's the home of the louisiana hayride ram records it's where the lonesome drifter cut his rockabilly masterpiece eager boy where elvis presley really got established as a live performer we're gonna have fun today so on the open road i don't have any leads going out that way i'm just going to stop at every place i can hand out cards see what transpires that's why i hand out cards i'll get a call a week to two years later saying oh, i got your card and you still buying them old albums well maybe not so much albums or albums but yeah i buy records well i like east texas it's pretty prettier than the uh, flatlands i live in so i'm about to go check out a place here hope i do well i'll be there in about three four minutes okay looks like we're arriving or i'm arriving well y'all are with me too and uh, oh this looks like a nice place i've only been here once and i need to uh, start hitting this place regularly so let's find a place there it is and let's get stuck in looks like a, a kind of a neat place i have arrived this place is great it goes on forever and I'm waiting for lights to come on because I see some records and I've already run across one really good one. Mary Lou by Young Jesse. Young Jesse lives in Dallas now. He's in his 80s. Really cool dude too. I'm rather excited. First thing off the bat, I see a few really suspiciously good looking records. So I'm here to get my record player so I can play and take all the doubt about what I'm buying. So uh, let's just go back inside and get the flashlight out and look at it. That was good. I was in there, oh, way over an hour. Did a lot of looking. I kept finding little hidden caches of records. Some of these have some bug grime and grit on them. It's going to take a lot of cleaning, but otherwise they look unplayed. Some of them. Some are very definitely well loved but let's take a quick look we've got mary lou by young jesse and that's on the blue label it's a good uh, r b rocker a little bit of kind of a garage thing new beats a really good rocker here kenny otty main drag saturday night this one is sharp cootie williams doing an instrumental, a bluesy instrumental, Rinky Dink, which is uh, pretty hard to find, actually. This is neat, good soul record on soul craft. Then uh, various soul records and psych records, and I'm going to really have to clean these because you can see how they are. Uh, some of these are quite nice, actually. That jade record there is worth some mazolas. But we'll just see what happens, see how it turns out. And uh, wish me luck. I don't think I'm going to go to uh, Shreveport. I think I'm, because right now it's almost 11, and that uh, holdup I had on the highway over near Terrell, that cost me some time. And I'm feeling lucky in this area. I'll go to Shreveport maybe in another week or two or three let things pile up there a bit more well all right i found another place i can go check i haven't been there but maybe once uh, sometimes i drive through these areas on my way to shreveport or points beyond so i get there too early or too late so hopefully uh, this place will be open and i do seem to remember some records being there in the past and some other good things and uh, that's about as far east as I'm going to go today. We have arrived at the next place. So I'm going to take a look there. And uh, as per normal, we'll just wander around, see what's here. I think the records are there kind of in the middle. So wish me luck. 
So I've got a lot to look through here. I've already pulled out a few that I like. Too much music going on though, so I'm gonna have to shut her down. Well, that was a bit of all right. Found four records. And I'm not sure what I've got here. That's just a neat record. I know there was some rockabilly on that label. I suspect this is not. But that's a good early Patsy Cline. Good bopper. Roll Granny Roll by the Midnighters. And uh, Dollar Down by Lewis Jordan. Good rock and R&B. So uh, I'm going to keep looking. So far, so good. But I do want it to get better. Well, I've got an odd random sale here, so let's check that out. Today's going well. It's starting to get a little colder, I think. Oh well, I like it. Nothing there at all to buy anyway. There were some 45s. They turn up just about everywhere. I don't know, maybe someday the supply is going to run out. Hopefully that won't be in my lifetime. I'd hate to have to think about actually getting a job and working, but if I have to, I'd have to. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Well, this is nice. I stopped at another place, and I found a great Texas 78. Somebody's trying to call me. Oh, well, I'll take that call. Well, okay, let's, let's take the next left onto Green Street, just, just as my uh, GPS tells me to. I used to could read a map. Oh, I was good at it. I mean, I was great at it. Nowadays, oof. Back when I was a kid, no, I don't want to start that OK Boomer stuff, but you know what I'm saying. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that yet. Yeah, I've heard that before too, lady. I'm almost there, isn't that great? Actually, I took a detour because there was a train block in this self-same track here, and I was able to stop at a place I wouldn't have seen, and I found that good 78 I just found. Now, take the next left onto East Cotton Street. The one I was just showing you when the phone rang, and that was brother producer anyway, who stitches all these things together for me. That was on the Gulf label, which is a fairly scarce label out of uh, Houston. And there's good rare hillbilly on that. 400 feet, turn left onto South Fredonia Street. Fredonia. Next left onto South Fredonia Street. Isn't that turn great? left onto East South Street. Well, since she's going to talk so much, I'm going to jump off and then I'm going to go to our next place. I figured out where we're going. I had to turn off the GPS. She had me wandering all around out in the wilderness. She's that way with me sometimes. So let's see what's shaking here. I think I've been here once or twice before in the past. If I have, it's been a long time, but it looks great. It really has that look to it. Now I've just got to find that one stack of 45s that's been missed by everybody else because they're hidden. All right. Looks kind of neat. Much three dollar records. Always like to pull spare sleeves when they're clean, just in case I find something that's not sleeved. So a lot of good. Records came out of this area in the 50s. Over in Marshall, there was the Buddy label, which put out Hillbilly and then lots of good Rockabilly, some of them quite rare. I'm going to switch to both hands now so I can finish this quicker. Oh, cool. No messed up nylon string guitar. I don't like nylon string guitars, they don't suit me. 20,000 words. Hmm, okay. Guess they got paid by the word, didn't they? 
Wow. Sometimes books are very, very fascinating. Well, nothing there, but it was a nice place, and of course, you got to hand out a card. And someday, something good will turn up there, and if not, hell, it's good exercise, ain't it? Well, cool. I looked up on the ever present internet and found that there's a flea market about, oh, seven miles from here. I think I'm going to go hit that instead of checking more here in town. Don't feel lucky here in town. So let's go check it out. I think I went to this flea market maybe two years ago and I seem to remember finding something and that was I think a Sunday towards the end of the day. So maybe on a Friday early on there'll be more things to pick from. That's what I'm hoping for. <sighs> I seem to remember this thing as being larger. I don't know. I don't think it was the guess. This looks to be the same layout. I think though the difference was this place was just packed to the gills with people on a weekend. Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. One guy there supposedly has tons of records, but he's not open today. So if I ever get back, I'll hit him up again. But I'm not gonna leave any turn unstoned. Well, now we're coming to Gladewater, Texas. This is a neat historical town musically. Uh, there was a great record company here called GM Records. They started, I think, the late 50s, probably ran through the early 80s. They did mostly country, but they did a little bit of rockabilly, a little bit of R&B, some good gospel, stuff like that. Typical small Texas label. Hey, here's an antique place. Let's turn around and go look. So, uh, it was also Elvis country. Elvis played a lot in Gladewater, and I think at one point he was kind of stranded here with car trouble for, I don't know, a few days to a week or more, and he pretty much just lived here for a bit, playing music where he could, and the people really love him here. So that's kind of neat. That was about 1954, early 55, five, during his Sun Record days. Let's go inside and see what's in this place. This is kind of a surprise. Well, that was profitable. Uh, they had a big display right out in the middle of the place of 45s and 78s. Uh, no 78s that I needed, though. They were all real clean and all just right time frame, just not the right kind of music. But the 45s, it looks like nobody had ever hit it before because I found a neat handful of odd labels. You know, and at a buck a piece, I don't have to really worry that much about taking in the uh, player and raising suspicion that I might be too interested in them. But there are some great looking New Orleans and labels here from the South. Uh, just a beautiful copy, of course, of Jerry Lee Lewis's Great Balls of Fire. That's common, but still people want it. And it's great music anyway. You don't have to sell a record to enjoy it. You can actually sit and listen to it. So let's take that lesson. Sometimes I forget it myself. Well, let's go into town proper. There's a lot of shops here and there's an old record company that was here like i'd mentioned gm i'm gonna drive by that first and just see if might not be anybody home to see if they still have anything inside the old building let's check it out let's hit the traders mall here it says there's a flea market as well so uh i'll have to come here on a saturday sometime and just see what's inside you know i think i have been here before Oh, I like that. There's Fred Flintstone's car off in the distance. I ought to rent that and drive around, do some segments in that thing. My feet would hurt, though. So, without further ado, hello, buddies. How y'all doing? Think I'm reaching in there and petting them. They're nuts. Ah. Well, neat. Let's go check out the bungalow shops. There's that Fred Flintstone car. Oh, that is just too classy for words. Okay, some of these are supposedly have records in there. We shall see. Well, I got sidetracked there by that uh, unexpected flea market. 
didn't find anything. Stuff a little too new for me. So cold out here that I can't talk straight. So anyway, we're going to head on over. Well, that used to be a place right there. Not anymore, though. We're going to hit some of the antique shops. They have probably half a dozen or more in this little town, and it's sometimes a nice place to go hunting. So, pretty little town, too. Little railroad track. It's kind of quaint. And I think I'm going to park in one spot and walk it all out. I need to walk. I'm still doing my diet called Don't Eat So Damn Much. But, this is a holiday, and I have been eating a little more than I should. But that's okay. I forgive myself completely. However, I, after the holidays, will begin in more earnest. I've only gained about three pounds back anyway. But I got to watch my figure, right? So let's just take them as they come. I'll have to go to the north part of town and hit that when I go to leave. And then I've got to go out and hit GM Records. I haven't found them open though in a long time. I'm just hoping to find somebody there who knows if there's still stuff inside the building. All right. I think I've seen these before, but maybe there'll be something new in here, but I'm almost positive I've seen this. Didn't find any records, but I did find sheet music to a Marx Brothers movie, Night at the Opera. I named my own record company Freedonia Records in honor of the country of Freedonia that only existed in Duck Soup, another fine movie by the Marx Brothers. Let's keep looking. Next couple of places uh, coming up. Hopefully they'll be good. I'll try to walk this out. Despite what I said earlier about wanting to walk everything out. All right. A little Christmas music was in the background. Not much. And it's refreshing that I haven't had to hear that piped in all day long. Kind of a Christmas miracle, or maybe it's a festivist miracle, the lack of Christmas songs. Yeah, this place has a, a lot of antique malls in it. It's a nice small town, but that seems to be their specialty. <laughs> Oop. Don't want to miss records. Pretty sure I've seen these before. Yeah. Well, I think I've got one place to go. I've been through about four or five shops. And I told you this was Elvis town. See, there's old Elvis, king of rock and roll. Up, oh, there's Johnny Cash. Kind of made him a lot taller than Elvis, didn't they? Oh well, let's see what this last place has. I have found things here before that have been pretty good. No luck, and that's quite all right. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I miss, but I'm always glad to get out. Gotta recheck this shop though, and I think it's still closed. And... No, I've already been there. Hmm. I remember there being one that said back in 10 minutes. I'll have to check and see if I can find that. So let's take a little look at what I've picked up so far. At that last place, Jerry Lee Lewis on Sun. Common, but neat. And then the Thunderbirds out of uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Rock Rock Boom. The Five Nights on Minute, don't know them. Same for the imaginations on music makers. Probably it's not much, not in very good shape. This is a good looking label, I just don't know it. I notice it says Detroit Music, maybe it's a soul thing. Roy Hammond and the Genies. Nope, don't know it, but it was cheap. Whammy and the Gizmo by Piano Slim. I know that one, that's fun. C.C. Carroll, 
boss tone, boss tones, mopity mope. I'm going to guess it's doo wop. I don't know. Same for Eddie Reeves. That looks like uh, Memphis to me. Bo Freeman. Another one of those Joe Parr records. Another Pearl record. Gene the Hat. Hopefully that'll be some fun stuff. And then Zero Records. That sounds like they're really aiming for the stars. Brad Ram Reynolds. I'm thinking that might be a rocker. We're going to find out later. Let's go on. Well, let's go over and uh, see if GM Records might still be around. I know that the uh, building will be there. And I think it still says it up above. And they put out some mighty fine records. And some mighty, eh, records back in the... 50s probably through the early 80s I think they might have started about 1959 or so really neat stuff though okay here it comes somewhere here hey there's people I'm stop and ask well that was cool I got to talk to uh, Johnny Mills and there it is GM records and recording studio Turns out the business is staying in the family. His uh, son is going to redo that, kind of make a museum and such out of it. Hopefully they've still got the machines and such. I would like to do a session there. That's a neat historical old building. And it just does my heart good to see that there's still, you know, the family taking care of it. Now when I met Jerome, not Jerome, but Jerome, back in old the 80s he was probably already in his 80s at the time he was very old gentleman at the time then son Johnny who I just talked to was a whole lot younger I mean it's been oh, 27 28 years ago but I recognized him and uh, that was good to see so hopefully I'll get to go in there and take a look maybe document a little bit of it they're really nice folks so let's keep on going down the road see what turns up well all right i'm heading down us 80 that's the east west or west east highway here in texas and it goes way on into louisiana and all those other states east of there i guess you'd say this is the gladewater highway it turns into the shreveport highway i use this highway quite often it's between shreveport and dallas so it's kind of a main artery. I don't like traveling on the interstate so much. Interstates are dull, and there's not junk stores parked on either side of them generally, at least not that you can get to easily. I like the older funkier routes, and this is one. A lot of historical stuff coming up. We're about to hit a little town, Big Sandy. There was a great uh, song by Bobby Roberts called, I'm going to find Big Sandy. It was a rare record. If you ever find it and it's real, you've got you some money there. Also, too, uh, Rockabilly Singer took the name Big Sandy, friend of mine. He's out in California, eh? Good guy, too. You ever, you ever see Big Sandy in your town? Go hear him play. It's gratifying. Just past that is Mineola. Mineola's a special town as far as music goes, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mineola was the uh, haunting grounds of a guy there, songwriter. Jack Rhodes and Jack Rhodes wrote songs bought songs off of aspiring songwriters had a small studio in the Trail 80 courts here on Highway 80 he'd set up a reel to reel and he'd record demo sessions off aspiring hillbilly and sometimes rockabilly singers and man some of the couple of the rarest great star day records one by Jerry Hansen one by Jimmy Johnson all dressed up and Jerry's record was called uh, I'm Doing All Right. They were some really great, basic, crude, bass slapping rockabilly. Just some really great stuff. Cost you an arm and a leg and then some just to find it and buy it. So there were other good things that came from the area, but that's, that's the main thing for me is stuff, stuff that Jack Rhodes had a hand in. He had quite an empire here for a short time. And I think he died back in 1969 or so. He didn't live to be very old, apparently. 
but he sure made his mark on music. He really did uh, have the rights and had written some really big country hits, so that kept the money going in for the family. I hope they're still getting it. So we're gonna be in Big Sandy soon and then over in Mineola. Doubt anything where earth shattering turns up, but maybe. Well, I've made it to Mineola. Already checked out the Goodwill, no luck there. I remember finding some spectacular records uh, about 28 years ago there, maybe 25. And we've got the antique mall or so here. I'm gonna come back to it and go to the one I'd like to see first though. I don't know if down this road or another. Yeah, yeah there the, some of them are. A little bit more here than I remember. But I'm going to go to this one older, funkier one first. It seems to have good stuff. One time I was going over to this one here and they had some uh, 45 records that were silicone glued to the wall. And there's a beautiful record on the Felco label by Bobby Crown, One Way Ticket. Fantastic rockabilly record. Well. It, they didn't glue the good side to the wall, so I paid them $3 for the record, got a spatula and peeled it off of there without breaking it, which is no mean feat with the Felco because they were pressed by Columbia Custom Press and they used very thin styrene. Not good, not good for peeling off a wall. Got off okay, minimal damage to the flip side. Got $100 for it. It's what I do. Okay. Nothing at that place. Looks like they're changing around inside. It was already fine the way it was. But anyway. I'm going to see what's in this antique mall. I think I found stuff here. It's been a while though. Well, it's gotten dark just about. Close to five o'clock, they're rolling up the sidewalks on all of these fine little towns. So I guess this day's hunting will come to an end. I've got about an hour and a half to go till I'm home and uh, I'll have fun. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget, I buy old records and don't forget, like and subscribe, please. We'll go to some more places in the times to come. Probably a little bit on the south side because it's getting cold here, and if I go north, I hit ice. Texas can't drive in ice. We just don't know how. We'll catch you on the flip-flop.